Hi guys! Today we will continue working on bank transactions with Golang Course. Uh, remember to subscribe our channel and to turn notifications on. It's important so you will not miss the next lessons. And if you like the video, give us a thumb up. Hi guys, welcome in the fifth lesson of the Golang course. Today we will continue working on bank transactions. I will show you how to create the new transaction database, how to handle API, how to send money from the one user to the second one and what is the most important, I will show you how to validate if we are owner of the account, if we are if we have permission to send the money, if we have enough money of the account and we will validate JVT token. Are you ready? Let's start! So as the first step we need to create interface for transactions. We will use it later for the database related stuff with transactions. So here we will create the function migrate transactions that we will use for create the new table. We should do it in the migrate, but actually we used migrate in previous lessons, so I don't want to mess you up with that. Next we can go into the transactions and here first we will create the function get account. So it will be function that will find the account in the database by ID and the return that account. We'll be able to do something with this one. And actually we use like this connect DB in uh, every place. In the next episode we will work on that. We'll create like uh, database connection optimization with connection pools. But now still let's stay with this one. Here we can check if a record is not found, we will return null, but if it's found, we will return the account that is already found. Now we can go into the much more exciting part of the lesson, it will be the proper transaction. To start working with that logic, we should stay in the same user accounts.go file and as the first step, we need to create the function transaction that will take user ID from to amount and JVT token. Next, uh, we should uh, convert the uint to staring. We do that only because validate token takes user ID as a staring. We can refactor that later when we we'll have more places that use the validation and they're not coming from the get method. Now we need to validate the GVT token as we did in the previous lesson. So we need to create like this is valid for validation and if else statement. We can copy the response from here and here we can continue. First of all, we will take the account like which we sent from, we will name it from account and use function get account and we will have the function to account. We will use the same function for that. Next, we need to handle our errors and verify if everything is fine first we will verify if our account and to account is fine if they exist if not we should return the message sorry account not exist
The next one that we would like to check is validation if we are owner of the account that we use to send money. If no, we will return the message, sorry, you are not the owner. The last one is valid verification if we have enough money on bank account so we will be able to send money transfer. If everything is fine, we can start updating accounts. So first we will update account of sender and we will update balance. It will be our balance decreased by money that we sent. Next, we will update balance of the account that will get the money from us. It will be similar to previous one, just we will add money to the account. If we already updated accounts, we should create transaction to have some information in our transactions history. Like for us or even if user will want to see his last transactions. We use the function from the transactions module that we will create soon. Now we can form the response and go into the return data response. Oh, sorry. Okay, next we need to update the function update account. Here we need to return the updated account, so we need to add the type which we will return we need to use some interfaces and uh, we need to form the response
Now we should create the module named Transactions. It will be module responsible for stuff related only to table transactions. It will be something like bank transfers history. First we need to declare the package. And now we can start creating function create transaction. It will be really similar, for example, to registration when we are creating users. Okay, if our function is ready, we can go into the api.go and start creating interface for transactions body. We will use it in our API call to handle the data from the body. Next, we need to refactor API response function and uh, if we have some error, we should return whole the response instead of just message. Because now we will handle much more of them. If our response is ready, we can start creating the function transaction. It will be really similar to the rest of the functions that we have in the API just with taking authentication. Here we need to take authentication from our header and here we can call the function transaction from user accounts. We need to pass the params and form the response. Oh, we have one mistake here, we should fix interface. It's here, we had like unit and we need normal number, integer. Okay, now it looks like we can handle the our endpoint in the router. We change the endpoint to the transaction and code looks like it's fine. In this step we can do migration so you will have the table transactions in your database. We need to comment the starting API for a second.
and we can test it here. We need to send the POST method to localhost uh, our port and endpoint transaction. Okay, uh, what is important for us when we will send the call, we need to have token. For authorization, we need to have user ID, our user ID, from ID of account and to. And of course, amount. We will send 350. As you can see, one user has 50k, a second user has 60k. So now we can send the money. We have the body with our balance after the call and information all is fine, so we'll be able to update our frontend immediately. We can verify here money is sent and we can see transaction 350. Congratulations, your bank transactions are done. Congratulations! I'm super excited because now your project is much more advanced. Now you know how to validate if we are owner of the account, you know how to check if we can send the money and what is the most important you know how to send the money from one bank account to second one so your application has really good features now of course in the next episode we can build much more advanced features but uh, in the next episode we will focus on optimization of database connections and refactoring codes so we will get a lot more performance and we'll eliminate some mistakes that can happen if we have too many users and your application will be much more prepared for more users if you liked the video remember about thumb ups uh, subscribe our channel turn on notifications and share it with your friends so more people will be able to learn golang Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye!